Bulk Email Validation API. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm going to go through our Bulk Email Validation API today, and I'm going to show you all the different endpoints that you can use in order to automate your process of sending us bulk files to our platform for validation. The first thing that you're going to want to make sure that you have is obviously a zero bounce account. You're going to need to make sure you have enough credits on that account to successfully validate any of the files that you are wishing to do. And you're going to want to make sure that you have a API key and you want to make sure that the API key is active. And so with that, we'll go ahead and we can go through what we're going to call the bulk email validator. And this will bring you over to our documentation on it. And I'll walk you through some of uh, the endpoints and how this works. So really this endpoint is pretty simple. We've thought about it in a very simplistic way. There's four total endpoints that you can use. Two would really be required. The other two would be optional, but the process would look like this. You would send us a file, by us I mean send two zero bounds through the send file endpoint. And what we'll do is we will accept that file, we'll provide you back a file ID. You'll wanna take that file ID and then you can use that file ID to check the status of that file, as well as retrieve the results and also delete the file if you wish. And I'm gonna go through a demonstration of this through Postman so you can get an idea of how this works. For those of you who are familiar with Postman, we do have a Postman collection that you're able to retrieve. It's on our SDK and you can find that here under our GitHub slash zero bounce. We have a Postman with version two. You can go ahead and grab it and get that hooked up to your Postman environment. So I'm gonna open Postman and we're gonna run through a demonstration of how to do this. Once you, once you install and uh, import the package for Postman, you'll see it here. And then I'm gonna we're gonna use today the four endpoints. They're right here, send file, file status, get file, and delete file. So what we really need here, um, obviously again, we need that API key. So you're gonna wanna grab it from your Platform, again, make sure it's active and make sure you have enough credits. And then what we're gonna need as well is a CSV file. I have prepared a demonstration file here for sake of speed. That file looks like this. This is the contents of that file. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. It has four emails in it. Most of them are just made up. And it also has a column header called email. And so I'm going to go ahead and save this file as demo and I'm going to upload it into Postman. So I've got that pre-filled and I put my API key. What you do need to put here is the column that your emails are in. And so in my example, this is column one. So if, you're, if your emails are in, the, in column D, then you would put four for that. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and send the file. And what you can see happens is that I'm getting a success. Uh, the file was accepted. Here's the file name that I sent in. And I now have this file ID. You will need this ID to go ahead and put different, uh, to check the other endpoints with that file in particular. One column on here that I do want to highlight, which would be very nice for anybody who's checking or who wants to automate, is this return URL. So you can enable this and put this, um, put a return URL that you want us to send a webhook to and we'll let you know when the file is completed so you can automatically retrieve the data. It's really, really nice to fully automate the process and not worry about what the status is. And you don't have to call our status endpoint over and over to check to see if it's done. I highly recommend the return URL for people who wanna fully automate the process. So as I mentioned, the send file and get file, these are really the two endpoints that are absolutely required. You have to send to us and then you have to get it back from us. These other two endpoints, file status and delete file, they're more optional, and I'll, but I'll go ahead and run through them as well. So if you just wanna check the status of the file and understand where it is in the processing period, you can go ahead and grab your file ID, which I have here copied. I'm gonna to go to my file status endpoint. It's very lightweight. All it's looking for is your API key and your file ID. I'll go ahead and hit send. I can see that the file has been completed. It's at 100%, file status equals complete. That's my ID. So this file is ready to be retrieved. Again, this endpoint's not necessary to do, but if you do wanna check something, you can, or maybe you wanna post progress in your platform. Maybe you wanna check this every 15 minutes to see where we are and pu push an update on the percentage. You can do that as well. When I go to get the file, I'll go ahead and put my key in. 
and my file ID. I'll hit send. And I'm getting the file back now as, um, as a CSV file back. And so obviously it's not the prettiest here um, as it's just the nature of Postman and how we, the data sent back and forth. But as a developer, you would know exactly how to work with this. We're providing back um, the same amount of rows that you were used to. And we're providing back the status and substatus of each one of these validations, as well as also catching typos, which I put here, trap at gmail.com. It's a possible typo. And here's the, the typo fix. So all of that information can be stored and you can go ahead and retrieve the results. So I've now gotten my file and let's say I would like to delete that file using the API as well. So this entire thing can be, can be automated. I can go ahead and grab my file ID. I have my API key. If I want to go ahead and do the file ID for this one and hit submit, I have now gone ahead and deleted my file and it's gone. Uh, so a lot of our customers like to automate that process. I just want to put out there so everyone's aware that by default, we will always, always, this is not an option, delete all of your files after 30 days. We will warn you a few times that we're going to delete your files. And the only reason we even keep it for 30 days is to give, make sure you have enough time to retrieve them. So we will automatically delete the files, but if you would like to delete it faster before that 30 day mark, you can do that here. And this is really similar to how our platform works as well. We use our own APIs in order to provide you validations through our platform on file uploads. And so we're really actually performing this exact process uh, when we go ahead and do it. So uh, this is what it looks like. This is how simple it is. This is how quickly you can actually even check it and get, get set up. And so I just want to walk through this today for everybody, and I hope you find this useful. We also have lots of... Um, different wrappers that are on our SDK for PHP, JavaScript, um, and some other ones as well, and .NET. And so I highly recommend if you want to get a jump start on your uh, API usage and hooking up our bulk API, this is a great way to use it. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.